Jewel and Jewel Centurions, and welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Commander, our past plus one of Fleet Admiral Derek, the battleship R.S. Caleb, as we continue our campaign against the Hydran Star Kingdom, and last time, well, we began the final sieges, or at least what we believe to be the final sieges of at least one of maybe two planets at two of thirteen, and once we manage to completely wipe this entire area out, we will have... Well, knocked out the entire economic heart of the entire Hydrant Star Kingdom. Also, looks like our little Klingon friends have gone away, so that's going to make life just a little bit easier. So, without further ado, let us set out into space. Yes, there is indeed the second planet, and see if we can't crush absolutely everything. And today, we shall begin, as we do on our most preferred way of beginning with an MET-10 patrol. Straight up battle, mono e mono one battleship versus potentially another battleship. Although, it looks like in this battle, it's a light cruiser and a frigate, and we brought a freighter along for the ride, just in order to sort of tie our hand behind our back. Good ignore the Frigate for now, we're basically just gonna dive on top of this light cruiser. We'll hit him with all the biggest plasma torpedoes that we have. I'm kind of anticipating they'll have another ship over there, otherwise I'm gonna have to assume that their economic base is in frightfully bad condition, which, you know, to be fair, it probably is. We have managed to knock out their capital in several important manufacturing worlds, so they've only got the two left. Knock oh, nope, there it is. Okay, it's another light cruiser, let me guess. Uh, no, it's a full-on light cruiser. I was expecting it to be an HDW, etc, 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 an ultimate soup heavy war destroyer. I'm actually gonna see what I can do to this guy if I just, you know, fire everything. Uh, I mean phaser-wise. Activate the track or beam, and we're going to actually just run on into him. Looks like he's a carrier, or a small light carrier, which may be worth actually trying to destroy utilizing all of our heavy weapons. Uh, because that's actually a lot of fighters, and I kind of want to kill them before they can actually hurt me. Otherwise, we may be facing a lot of incoming damage. Yeah. Oh, wow. All of that bouncing off the forward shield, so that's a fairly good setup. And then we completely wipe the damage the first of the vessels out on over to the little light legionnaire hunter of some description and we're just going to continue to putter about no need to enhance the speed to any sort of maximum level unless you know he gets un utterly annihilated from all the incoming fighters which he did sudden speed of time because now we're actually in a battle it is a two on one although i'm gonna be blunt i actually don't think it's that big of a concern i don't think those fighters are gonna make it back to the home nope they did not they got intercepted and annihilated and I'm just going to rip on through his forward shield. I also could target you with a F-firing pseudo-torpedo. Or several of them. Wow, I actually fired a little bit more than I otherwise intended. And he's utilizing his Gatling phasers to cause a lot of damage to us. Did not manage to cut, cut through our shields, however. And we were able to bring them away for another defensive setup. I do have a plasma torpedo. Unfortunately, I don't have a fake one anymore in order to precede it. Uh, however, that's not the biggest of problems. We're going to set this to offline. That way we're not wasting any power anymore. And our main plasma torpedoes are just about to be ready. So that's going to be extra fun. That is, of course, if we need them at all. We might actually be able to kill him with phasers alone, which would be fairly interesting. Uh, can I get you to stop again? Because you didn't stop the last time, it seems. And more phaser on through his defenses. How is he going to respond to this? Are you actually going to respond to it? You did not. Which tells me you're dead. And I'm mostly con convinced I can wipe this guy out with just utilizing the rest of my plasmas. So on the starboard side, crushed. And on the port side, just a little bit more fire. Crushed. Didn't even need the plasma torpedoes as I had suspected. We managed to actually win that entire battle without losing our shields at any point, which means perfectly undamaged. So three targets destroyed without too much... Okay, we did lose a freighter, but the freighter honestly is not the biggest loss ever. I mean, it's a freighter. Who really cares? So, 118 prestige is a reward for job well done. Emperor defense is down to 30, which places it very much on the back foot. We got to leave and then return, with the hopes that we can actually continue to conquer the entire area. Up, oh, up, nope, surprise reverse is going to lock us down, or a scout. I'm going to take the scout. A surprise reverse is a good mission to take earlier on when you're sort of hurting for cash, but we have 12,530. At the end of the day, we actually could probably buy another King Condor without too much effort to put into it so a simple straight up scout mission where we come in scan them and annihilate them is in my opinion preferable than having to sort of wind our way through the six ships that are five one two three four five Huh. Five or six ships that we normally have to destroy when we do a surprise reverse. So I am not all that concerned or overly concerned with that. So we're just going to set up all the rest of the ship systems. I'm also going to prepare a tractor beam. That way we can just come up to him and grab onto him. And then we'll also prepare the deep scan. So the deep scan will be fully set up and we'll get enough information on him. Looks like he's got like a single group of fighters and a pair of fusion cannons. So it's a very low level freaking... <laughs> oh, he's got a triplet of fusion cannons. I'm sorry. We didn't give him nearly enough credit. Although I don't anticipate I'm going to need to slow down a little bit more since I don't want to get too close to him once, you know, we track him. Come on, scientists, please, you've got this handled, right? Science division, scan him. There we go. 
to hopefully break him in order to keep him from being able to cut loose. And there we go. Scanned and destroyed in less, oh no, slightly more than a minute. I was kind of hoping that I had it done in like 50-something seconds, but actually no, it felt like 30-something seconds, but I'm not going to complain too much about it. Only a little bit. So, once again, an easy mission. 320, apparently, for annihilating a little tiny frigate, so not quite certain what's going on there. Holding action is interesting, but I don't think it actually affects the uh, the area, should, unless we actually manage to blow everything up. And if we're going to blow everything up, we may as well take the patrol itself. So let's just continue to blast our way along. We are probably insurmountably powerful compared to what the entirety of the enemy can bring up. Okay, there's a single heavy cruiser off in the distance and a light cruiser as well. I'm going to assume you're an alphabet soup, but I have no actual information that'll tell me that yet. No, you are another LNHSR, but the LNHSR wasn't particularly well equipped with a whole bunch of systems that makes me at all concerned for my victory. So I'm just going to ignore you and said I'm going to focus on this heavy cruiser because heavy cruisers potentially can bring a lot of a damage. It is an IRQ. We also have a CHY heavy cruiser. I'm assuming these two are the inverses of each other, so I'm going to see if I can't annihilate the one before I go after the other one as soon as I have power, which I do, and then I will use all of it in order to just sleep on forward as quickly as we possibly can. So we should probably do that little juke maneuver that we've been practicing for so long and we've kind of not been using as of late. And fire the pseudo. Now the reason why we should do it is because it keeps us in practice and two, it reduces the amount of damage that we might otherwise take. So are you actually going to respond to that? There we go. His response just took a little while longer than I kind of figured it should have. So we've got four fighters currently in on us, and the, the, the sheer speed we can maintain once all our systems are actually charged up is rather hilarious to me. So we're going to get ready for a full-on annihilation assault. And D-type plasma torpedoes currently engaging to defend ourselves. And that's one fighter group in completely destroyed. We're about to come around for a good angle on this one. He's accelerating on into us, which may not be the most brilliant plan that he has. There's all the plasma that I can muster. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be showing a very weak side. I got hit by some more Hellbores. I do want to get this other S-type off and see if we can't duck away before anything can happen. Please kill him. Ah, oh, perfection. All right, so we did manage to annihilate the first heavy cruiser without actually taking any penetrating hits. We do have some severe damage on the starboard side shields, but the starboard side shields are still intact. And, oh, okay, so the Gallant is like a command variant, I think, because he's got a mix of Hellbores and Fusion Cannons. Didn't actually pay attention to what he had. Huh. It's not really important at the end of the day. We managed to completely annihilate him. So I think most of your fighters have been dealt with and I don't need to worry about them. You are very much rigged for close combat. You have a similar rigging. I mean, you do have two fusion cannons and two hellbores. So, uh, okay, there's limitations on how close I can say similar rigging to that. Just wait for the fighters to shoot, decloak, and prepare to strike back with aft firing weaponry. Uh, we have used all of our plasma torpedoes in order to try and hurt things, but I can do that. And I'll cut right through your shields and deal 71 damage. Oh my goodness. That is rather severe. <laughs> we have managed to harm him quite badly. I'll make sure the phases are overloaded. I think they were, I just wanted to be sure. So as long as I'm not firing plasma torpedoes, I don't really care. So a little bit more of a light plinking. I'm going to decloak again. Oh no, get back on the cloak. <laughs> I just realized his fusion cannons are about to be recharged. <laughs> and a little bit more light fighter cover, but that's perfectly all right. Plasma torpedoes to normal mode. I'm not going to waste the power on them anymore. And now we can decloak and engage him probably for free. Okay, not quite for free, but not all that expensively either. And you can have that. Oh, uh, shut off the tractor beam, please. I do not need them. Although I am getting bombed quite considerably. You took another 44 damage, which is kind of interesting. You took more damage from my aft firing phases than my forward firing ones. But we have managed to harm them both pretty severely at this point, as we just continue to skulk around nice and hiddenly. I'm gonna slow down a little bit more, see if I can't get a little bit of power into my plasma torpedoes. In fact, you offline entirely? Let's see if I can't get at least something charging up at this point. Uh, more fighters incoming, although they're not exactly in great shape at this point. There's only t two groups of two, which is considerably less than you might otherwise expect. Uh, I anticipate you're going to be opening fire with all of your weapons, and that's what I was expecting. You also have a Hellbore all ready to go. I can see it. Don't think you can fool me. So I'm going to wait. He managed to hit me with that Hellbore, which is unfortunate. He does have Gatling Phasers. It's going to come online soon, but I think I can break him. There we go, and I'm just going to wait until I've got my aft shields torn just to protect myself a little bit better. And that breaks him. So on to these fighters. And I've weakened them enough to make him definitely going to die. 
So I'm going to stay outside of Cloak for a moment, enveloping Plasma Torpedoes af Plasma to offline. I don't need them, I don't want them, I'm not interested in having them active. So we're going to slowly bring this sucker around. We are waiting for the phase capacitor to fully charge back up so that we can actually have some form of additional shielding on the forward shield, but we've dealt with all the fighters. His fusion cannon armament is interesting, but not to the point where I would say I need to definitely back off on him. Yes, fusion cannons operate incredibly powerfully at close ranges, however my forward shields yeah, he always fires them at far beyond effective range. A f distance of five is like the uppermost max that you would ever want to fire a fusion cannon at. And the fact that he decides to do that anyway really just kind of demonstrates how far outside his leg he is. Yeah, only about 41 damage utilizing the forward phasers. So apparently our aft firing phaser assault is much more powerful, which is rather impressive to me actually. Uh, I'd rather not have to reveal that side to him because if I do, then he's going to penetrate and I don't want to... And now we cloak. We're going to slip in the cloak and conduct the turn. Okay, we should be good. So I was just worried about him getting his weapons around to face this weakened shield. He fired all of his Gatling phasers on that one, so I'm going to decloak once again. He might have a couple of phaser twos, but I don't think it's going to be anything significant. He is outrunning me, but I've got, you know, that. So honestly, I'm kind of surprised we didn't manage to lose any of our shields on that one. We came awfully close in three locations, almost four, but we did manage to get through fighting all three of those ships without actually losing any shields, which excellent testament to the ship itself. I mean, the, the, the King Condor is a phenomenal vessel. It is just the perfect package of heavy lethality, survivability, and well, it has a cloaking device, which kind of makes it nearly insurmountable for quite a few opponents. Not all of them, but a fairly few number of them. So, the King Condors are, they won my battleship list for a reason, and that was why. Although we are now going to be facing down two Dreadnoughts at least, and we brought the Clothos, a Klingon C-10, uh, which... Monoclass... <laughs> Alright, so we've got a battleship carrier and a full-on battleship, so we are going to hit the battleship carrier with everything we've got. Because that thing needs to die quickly. So this is the battleship carrier, this is the battleship, monoclasses, both very dangerous. One of the more dead, de one of the more deadly battleships in the entire game. Uh, not as much in hands of the AI, but definitely it's not exactly something you want to walk into on a dark alley. So we're gonna have to be clever about this if we don't if we want to get out of this without taking too much damage. Uh, absolutely going to be using that little jink maneuver that we have practiced over and over, and we'll get back into it. I'm gonna start extending the range out a little bit. Uh, see if I can't split them off because I do think my C10 can take on. Oh, the amount of damage you can deal even from a range of 30 is kind of terrifying. Okay, on in towards him. And back down to normal time. Prepare the R type plasma torpedo as the decoy. A human player would never fall for this. First of all, they would look at that and say, oh, that's not terrible in range. And we have learned we must immediately cloak in order to prevent the follow up from doing anything significant to us, which uh, still managed to do a fairly decent amount. Is that all of his fighters? One, two, three. Yeah, that's all of his fighters. So there's his immediate stop maneuver, and we're going to just slide out and around and then back in as we get ready to just utterly annihilate him we do of course need to wait for his fighters to attack us before we come out of cloak otherwise they can deal a ton of damage and we would prefer that not to happen so he is starting to accelerate so we do need to get the bow on soon because the plan will be to fire cloak and hopefully break off here comes all the fighters yeah th these fighters are literally capable on their own of annihilating an entire battleship without too much trouble so wait till he gets to three. Point defense systems have engaged. All oh, my plasma. And cloak. I could try and go for the aft, for the uh, aft plasma S torpedo. I don't think it's going to be worth it. The Fs are going to definitely suffer a little bit from the angle change. There we go. However, we did manage to get a fairly good penetration on this one. So wait for him, because I kind of do want to bore in on this now. So yeah, unfortunately the Clothos is in a very rough spot. But what I do want to do is I want to engage this guy with my phasers at this point. I just need to make sure that the f actual fighters are done. Yeah, he decided not to engage me. I think we're good. Maybe not, but I'm hoping we're good. The range is fine. Phasers are, of course, overloaded. And a fairly significant amount of damage being done there. Wipe you out, and I am way, way too close to the Monarch. Okay, so the Clothos is just getting the absolute crap beaten out of us. It is not going to survive. I do think I can handle this, I'm just not sure. Hmm, maybe not. We are currently scoring, scoring down two of the most powerful battleships in the game. Like, these took number four, but that's only because the AI doesn't know how to handle them. 
and so they don't really use them to their full effect, but they are still incredibly dangerous. As you can see, despite the fact that I'm cloaked, you managed to cut through all the way to my uh, pale yellow shields already, which is a bit of a problem. So that's the big one. I'm gonna hope that a nuclear space mine is just the thing that I need. I think he blew up his own, yeah, he blew up his full infusion cannon. There goes my half shields. That's, that's a problem. Turn, turn, turn. Okay, I'm not sure if that was good or not. I mean, he took the hit, but we took the hit worse. So I gotta wait for my plasma torpedoes to come back. We are not a phaser brawler. That is the important thing to keep in mind. We do need to break out of this soon. Rather sooner than soon. Uh, fix the DDI plasma torpedo. It's very important to head back online. And we'll just keep slowly angling around. In fact, cut some speed. See if I can't get this monarch to pass over me. If I were him, I'd turn right in. Yeah, he, that's exactly what he's doing. He's turning right into me. We're, we're vulnerable, and that was another big shot from him. Please tell me you fired. He has not fired most of his phasers. Oh, you're so good. And he's dropped another fighter group on top of me. So, not good. He's in a really good position to actually cover for his, uh, the other Monarch class battleship carrier. Oh, you fired everything. Or at least now you did. Target this one. And decloak. Which opened us up to his fire, but hey, I think I've got a shot here. Nope. Nope, come back to this. Shoot. Yeah. That. That was a problem. Okay, we gotta get out of here. Uh, we've lost too many important systems. We're going to cloak and slip on up. And yellow alert. alert. So as good as we are against multiple targets, we become a lot more vulnerable. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that we can nearly disappear. While dropping mines. So our rear shields are down, but that's to be expected. We just need to get some time. Alright, we'll pull away though. We will get out in time. At least I firmly believe we'll get out in time. If not, then things are going to go really, really badly for us. Uh, fix the phasers. Because plasma torpedoes are not all that important at the moment. I mean, the phasers aren't either. We're just going to be running at this point. Another mine to see if we can't get the enemy to give us a little bit more space. And as we repair the ship, we can steadily get a little bit faster and faster, which will allow us to escape. And they're traveling directly away from us, which is good. I mean, the range isn't as far as we kind of need it to be. But we're working on it. <laughs> Okay, and give me another mine. There we go, creating a nice little cone, a nice little defensive semicircle, sphere, however you want to describe it, as we're just going to get out of here. Alright, that should give us the room that we need. We do need to stay on top of repairs though. Ooh, that's, don't, don't run through my mines. Please do not run through my mines, guys, they're, they're here to keep me alive. So I need to get my warp engines fully repaired, which we took a ton of damage on the warp engines. Which is, of course, always a major problem. And they're going to be able to outrun me as long as we stay under cloak, which we're going to be under cloak for a while. So, ooh, they're starting to just plow the mines, which is not good. So, keep the circles going. And are you going to plow? Good, no. Yeah, they're corralling me, which is less than good. Maybe I should sprint for the... Eventually I'm gonna run out of stuff. Oh, there it is. Yeah, we're gonna take a lot of fire, but I think we might make it out of here. Their phaser armaments are fairly powerful, but I think we have enough tankiness on top of the ship. Oh, they have gone through the last of my mind, so now it's just a... Now it's just a game of trying to get out of here as quickly as possible as they just hang back there. Keep the repairs coming. As long as I can keep above a 73, I can know that I'm doing enough repairs fast enough in order to get actually out of here, although we are starting to lose out of that battle. They're causing more damage than I can fix. Come on, we're almost out of here. Keep the repairs coming. Don't let them get me down. Are you kidding me? I think we're going to lose it. That's not good at all. Oh, we're decloaking. Huh, they got the ship? That's rather impressive, actually. 
So we hung around for a bit too long, and that one salvo where we just hung out there waiting to try and get a target on, that's probably what really did the ship, and which is a bit unfortunate, because losing a King Condor is never a great system. And I was just extolling the virtues of the ship, seeing how powerful it was, but if you get mobbed by this, then you're in a lot of trouble. So unfortunately, the C-10 wasn't able to even stave off the Monarch for very long. We don't fall back very far. We are still in the Puget Terror, but I think since we've lost it, we may as well take a look to see if the XCBs uh, are out. Doesn't look like it. There's also no King Condors. There's, oh, no, there's a K-10. So there are no K King Condors currently on the docket, but we will keep an eye out for it. The other thing that we'll currently start looking for is the XCB, but that's going to have to wait until next time. I have been Tarek. If you like what you've seen, hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I post one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.